What is happening guys? Welcome back to Red Bridge Garage and we have another North Star engine. This is the biggest one I was excited about, the E420. This is a EFI 420cc engine. That is huge because we've been wanting EFI forever because we've been messing with superchargers and you never can get the fuel quite right. So I'm hoping this will be our answer to videos like that. Um, a freaking fuel injection engine? That's awesome. This thing is $600 which is about $150 more than you pay for a normal Harbor Freight 420 or a Duramax 440. So today we're gonna to open it up, we're gonna take a first look at it, see how the whole setup is. I'm assuming that it has a throttle body with a small injector, um, something like the lawnmower series engines would, but this is the first single cylinder that I've got to mess with that is fuel injection. Uh, so let's cut this thing open, get it out of the box. This is at Northern Pool. One of our friends called us, he was in there shopping around, called us and told us about it. They also have a CDI Ignition 224cc engine that we got too, that you guys might have watched before this or after this, however they come out. But uh, more excited about this one. So one thing it says on the box, which we don't care about, but it has a five year warranty, uh, which do we care about that? No, because we're gonna be voiding it immediately. Because not only are we gonna be breaking it, breaking into it today, but I think this is the candidate to put the supercharger on that we did a while back on the 440 Duro Max. So one nice thing is it does come with extra, an extra throttle eyelet. Now, how is this gonna work? I don't understand how the throttle eyelet would work, but that gets me a little bit excited because maybe there's a way to hook up a throttle cable to it. Because if you notice, it has a potentiometer so that's how you set it from high to low. If you guys remember, there was the 999cc had this same style setup, but it was just a electronically controlled carburetor. This is actually fuel injection. Have your push button start, this is your main power on and off, and then you just set it and forget it, like on a wood chip or something. And I can already see like the cables. There's no throttle plate over here. That you, so it's very strange. Why would they give us this? This doesn't make any sense, but it kind of excites me. So first off, let's look at, right off the bat, these North Stars are the best looking engine I've ever seen. Like it's got this fake carbon fiber like texture to the plastic. The pull recoil starts really nice looking. Just everything is so huge and it looks really good. And the valve cover even says fuel injection and it's like machined aluminum. So this is the electric start. They do have a pull start variant, I'm pretty sure. Um, probably this is the ECU type uh cdi it has a few power connectors that are just blank which i'm very curious about this because what do these go to i have plugs that match this style um so i don't know what all this is to it'd be awesome if they allow you to hook it up to a different potentiometer to control it because what we could do is buy an e-bike or electric go-kart gas pedal which all of it is is a potentiometer and we could hook it up and then have a throttle because I think this would be sweet on gravy bones. Like having all the technology, you know, would be really cool. But we'll have to look at the manual, of course, later. I'm gonna pull the air box off real quick. That was on there real good. So we got a normal air box set up. It's just very large to hide the fuel injection. This is sick. So we got a fuel injector, or this is a fuel line here. Got a nice hard line that runs over to our fuel injector. Then we have electronic throttle body. This is the only downside. It's like a what we call drive-by wire on a car. Why would they do that? Like, I've always thought this is weird. Look at this gasket. Mm. It's like all the excess gasket. But oh, man, that is cool. It is a Hemi-style big block. Uh, so that is really cool. It's almost intimidating taking this whole thing apart. So one thing you gotta know is right off the bat, you have to have a battery to run this. You can see on the box that it says you have to have a 14 amp hour battery to run the fuel injection. So what that tells me is they don't have a good enough charging system to be able to run its own EFI. The EFI must take a decent amount of power to run that injector and everything. So you're gonna wanna put, I would personally put a lithium battery on this. I wanna know how much the, the setup can like adjust itself. If we put an open air filter on this, will it run right and like give it more fuel? But it doesn't have, I don't see how it would do that because it has no mass airflow sensor on it, which would be before the carburetor 
or the throttle body and tell how much air is moving into the throttle body. So that's the only thing I don't know. Like how does it know how much fuel or is it predetermined by the ECU how much fuel it's pushing in? And if so, there's a company in Georgia called Mega Squirt and they also make a micro squirt and we could get that micro squirt. And what it is is a standalone mini ECU. Like if you're turbo in a Miata and you don't want to go through all this stuff, you can buy the standalone ECU to tell the injector and everything to do more. Maybe we can do that on this. It'd be awesome to collaborate with micro squirt, see if we can get this so we can fully tune it and put the supercharger on it. That would be sick because we'd have a true blow through setup. We could run a blow off valve on it and everything. It'd be pretty crazy. So looking at this thing, it looks like it has a temperature sensor in the head here. So it's a temperature sensor that runs to the ECU and everything. So it's monitoring how hot the engine is. It looks like the block is a standard GX390 block. Okay, so the coil is right there. The ignition coil is hard mounted under the fuel tank. This has got me, this is a good value for 600 bucks. You're getting a lot with this engine. Will we be able to do much more in the future with it? I don't know, but I'm gonna look at how to take this thing apart because it looks like the fuel tank is capped off. Looks like the gas tank is fully enclosed. I'm gonna take out, do I know if this is the right way? No, T25. Ooh, I was, okay. So I have a fuel pump right there. Now to take off the gas tank, how do we do this? Okay, so I'm gonna unhook the fuel pump. Yeah, it's got your little sock to keep the fuel clean. Now we can get a look at the ignition coil mounted right here on this whole support bracket. We look right there, you can see the potentiometer uh, for the throttle, the ignition, as well as the on off switch. So we'll definitely be taking all this out to mount it on the front of the go-kart. And if you look, the side cover looks like a standard um, big block side cover. Head and everything looks the same. Has a really nice piece of steel that ducks the heat. This is the most exciting big block I've ever seen. This is another thing is what happens when this fuel pump dies? Can we get parts for this engine? That's another thing. I don't know how good the electronics are. Um, our potentiometer has some numbers on the back so we can try to, like I'm not a electronics guru with stuff like that with potentiometer and stuff, but I know some people I can call tell them this. Uh, we're working with Electric & Co right now, do electric mini bike very soon. So they'll probably be able to give me a, a source or something to get a gas pedal to wire into this, to get rid of all this. Like we can keep the push button start in this and mount these two on the front of the go-kart. This is perfectly fine. It's just a potentiometer is what. Oh, that's sick. That's why they gave you a throttle hookup. So on screen, if you look, I circled, you can hook up a throttle to the potentiometer. That is awesome. So you don't have to worry about buying something different. You can use all this mounted to, like I would of course put these two on the front of your go-kart, but the potentiometer back here, you pull the, you would actually pull these screws out and you can run a throttle cable right in through this rubber grommet, clamp it down and hook it up. That's sick. So we'll be able to use this just like a standard uh, go-kart. All right, so we're gonna pull this front panel off. It's just five Phillips heads. Won't give me much uh, cable pull. So there's the cable hold down. You can see that. This is where you put the throttle eyelet that would pull and push the throttle. Oh, okay, so they, there's a tab here for a spring, but they didn't give us a spring. But you can put a a small spring from this to one of these holes that's in this uh, plate here. And that would be our throttle return. Oh, they are genius. They put the spring right here to hold it for you. That's just sitting there. So you pop this spring out. This is, I tell you, 
kudos north star this is awesome honey i am extremely excited about this so let's go ahead and pop that mug off there so people's been asking where's the big block dyno content and those dynos aren't really built for a big block the torque twists the frame and ends up making the chain skip a tooth let me get this hooked up and i'll show you so what I have to do with the dyno to get it ready is I gotta stiffen up the frame quite a bit. So I'm not gonna pull the entire fan shroud because there's stuff connected to it. To see this, oh, okay, never mind, we can't. There's another cable going on here, what's this? For, where's that sensor going? The end lights up red when you start it. That's an LED wire that goes with that. It up and we us. about to. So it's got a normal cast flywheel with the plastic fan. Nothing different there. I'm really hoping a billet flywheel works on it, but we got to see how the flywheel is controlled. So after looking through the owner's manual, I'm going to call about like stuff like a fuel injector or the carburetor assembly and see how much we can buy these components to add to another engine. I also have a, a guy that's really good at sourcing stuff from China. So I'll have him get with the manufacturers and see if we can buy them to like add to a Duromax 440 or something. It'd be cool just to see what it would cost. Uh, I'm sure it's cheaper just buying the engine, but we did find out there is a mass airflow sensor. I don't know where it's located. It's probably built into the carb, but it has a throttle position sensor, of course, and that tells ECU where the throttle's at. Um, and then on the back side, which you guys can't see, on the back side back here, if you look over the valve cover on the ECU, uh, there's a, or not the ECU, but on the carburetor, there's a fault indicator. So basically it'll flash uh, once if it's an injector fault four times, if it's a fuel pump eight times, if it's an ignition coil fault seven for the throttle position sensor, five for the head temperature sensor, two for the manifold air pressure sensor fault. And then if it's just on, that means you have manifold air temperature sensor fault, charging system fault, battery voltage fault, engine temperature too high, low oil sensor. <coughs> so that just means like, <coughs> if it's on, you're screwed, baby. We got fuel in it, we put Amsoil break-in oil. Make sure to check out the links for Clovis Lubricants. He is Amsoil dealer. He's the guy that hooked us up with the dyno. Um, he completely sponsored that out of his pocket. He's an awesome dude and Amsoil is the best oil you can possibly run. And if you want it proved to you, you can give a Clovis a call and he'll explain to you why Amsoil is the best and give you all the resources to find out for yourself and read for yourself. If you turn the switch on, you'll hear the fuel pump kick. You'll see the LED star kick on. So then we just hit, I'm standing right in front of the thing muffler. It's all the way down the throttle. Oh. A few moments later. So what we did was we couldn't get this thing to start. It would like start up, but then stumble and die. Uh, so I called the North Star Tech Support, and they said you want to make sure you put it all the way full throttle, so on the bunny rabbit when you start it, and that worked. Um, but it does it. It takes a while, he said, for the system to prime. I don't know how much I believe that. Like the fuel injection should be pretty decent at priming itself. But I know you probably want to cycle it brand new out of the box. Uh, cycle this power switch on and off three or four times. But we did get it started off camera. It fired right up actually when we went to full rabbit. But another thing is no, there's not a lot of parts available right now. You do have to go through North Star. This is an engine that they're saying that's only theirs. We've seen that in the past that, you know, the company in China making them will sell them to somebody else eventually. So I don't know about getting parts for it. That's what is to be determined. I don't know where the... Uh, the governor is in this. Is it in the coil? Is it in something else? I don't know. So I don't know how we can get past stuff like the governor, but we're going to fire it up. Sounds like a normal engine. We just want you guys to hear it. So turn that on. I did hook up the spring to the throttle, but you probably shouldn't when first starting it because you do have to hold it over the rabbit. And then we're going to hit. The
So there are a few harnesses on the back of this engine and that is for like other accessories uh, for like air, they're putting this on an air compressor. So you'll be able to buy a harness later that you can run maybe inside your shop and you can control the compressor from inside your shop by starting it, idling it up, stuff like that. So that's what these are for. So that means we can tie into them if we can find out what those wires are. Maybe back trace them because I would imagine one of these, I know we said also one should be for diagnostics for the manufacturer. They can plug up a computer and it tells them what's wrong with the thing. But um, I I'm really curious to know what these go to, pin them out, find, because I think what you could do is leave all this right here if you wanted to, and you could come up with something that would plug up to this and run to your go-kart front. I'm excited about this. Do I think you should go buy one for your go-kart? Absolutely not right now. It's for one, it's $600. You're getting a lot of value for that $600, you know, with the EFI, but I don't know how realistically good this engine is gonna be. I think it'll be a decent engine, but on a go-kart application, I don't know. Uh, but we're gonna modify the crap out of it. Find out what fits it. Next video, you know, on this engine, we'll probably do some performance parts to see how the ECU reacts to it, like put an open air filter on it, put an exhaust and stuff like that and try to mount it on some type of go-kart to see like, is this even usable in the go-kart world with that throttle bracket they give you in there? It's pretty cool, but I think it's gonna be really sluggish driving it. Uh, so maybe I can talk to Electric and Co. Maybe they could hook me up with some sort of potentiometer to hook up to this or something, or a way to pin it out and find out the ohms and all that jazz. But uh, pretty cool engine, it looks awesome. Things are really good looking engine, but uh, only time will tell in us modifying these things, what you can actually do with it. So uh, make sure to let us know what you would wanna see done with this. I think we should put the perform mild performance parts on it, then do something like a cam and stuff to it, and then see what we have to do to get past the governor. Once we get past the governor, we need to find out about valve springs. I'm sure 420 valve springs are going to be fine. And flywheel. Find out if we can run a billet flywheel because of the way the ignition system is. Uh, it's too much for one video. We just wanted to show you guys this and you let us know what you want to see with this E420 from uh, Northern Tool. This is their premium line of engines. Uh, we bought this out of pocket. They didn't pay us to do anything. They didn't send us anything. They don't know who we freaking are. So um, check them out though in your local store. They're pretty cool. Don't buy one yet. Don't buy one. If you want to know anything about it, want us to do anything, let us know. Love you guys. We thank you so much for watching. We ask you to stay safe and God bless.